I'm a radio and club DJ, and in my line of work, I'm surrounded by people that like the odd split. Despite it being illegal, I've always thought it was pretty harmless fun. But more and more these days, I'm hearing that cannabis is serious business. People just generally don't realise what is going on. Organised criminals are making big money growing the stuff. Wow. Well, this is the main room. That is a lot of cannabis. That's probably a quarter of a million pounds worth of it. Wow. And the market is now flooded with high strength cannabis varieties branded skunk. It's stronger than that used by previous generations. It's not the stuff you smoked at college. It's like a super strength cousin of cannabis. And there's an argument raging about the possible dangerous effects. I'll spend two weeks with the Bristol Drug Squad as they raid cannabis factories. We've got two rooms. I'll meet people who love to smoke cannabis and don't see it as a problem. <coughs> That's a lovely skunk, right? And I'll meet those who've had a nightmare on it. I opened up the Evening Standard and it was like a two page spread. It was just like, skunk has ruined my son's life. I want to find out what's really going on with Britain's cannabis boom. It's rifle at the moment and we could go out doing cannabis every day and, and generally find something every day. Recently there's been a massive debate about how safe cannabis is and the picture I'm getting is pretty confusing. On one side you've got government advisors saying it's less harmful than alcohol then there are those who say smoking cannabis can be a huge health risk, especially to young people, whose brains are still developing and are more sensitive to the effects of the drug. The government has recently made the law around cannabis tougher, so smokers could get a criminal record if they're caught. Despite this, three million people in Britain regularly smoke cannabis, and many say it's just a normal part of life. So why is it such a big deal now? I head down to the Hemp Fair in East London. This is a massive annual celebration for everyone who loves the cannabis plant. Exhibitors come to this expo from all over the world to show off their cutting edge growing equipment. Wow. The latest in stoner chic and even new cannabis varieties. This is the Afghani bull rider strain, and uh, we're entering it into the Cannabis Cup in Amsterdam. I think he's gonna win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck, man. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> I have to say, it all feels a bit weird, like an ideal home show for the cannabis community. I love it, big time. I've been doing that for the last nine years. Okay. It's a plant that is beyond my understanding. You know, I get mesmerized, hypnotized when I look at it. <laughs> really? Yeah. I hadn't realized just how passionate people are about cannabis. Millions and millions of people on the streets of the UK smoke cannabis and use cannabis. There's no two ways about it. How much is the industry actually worth? How much would you say? Billions. Literally billions of pounds in the UK. The happy vibe in the expo is a long way from the scary stories I've been reading about cannabis. You almost forget it's illegal. Well, almost. Personally, I'm not a cannabis smoker, but I can see how popular it is. What's worrying some experts is the age of users. One in five British teenagers regularly smoke. We went up to Newcastle to meet college student Cal and his mates. If the lads have some spare cash at the weekend, they'll try to track down a dealer to get hold of some cannabis. Come on, hey, have we had a minute? He's got it, sorted. I don't really want to know where it's going, to be honest. As long as it ends up in my pocket, I don't care. Come on, let's get the average age for first use of cannabis is 13, and one in three young males use the drug. <coughs> what? <coughs> That's lovely skunk, right. I was about um, 14 when I started, 15 maybe, when I started smoking. Um, 
It wasn't for any particular reason. It was just the fact that a lot of people were doing it, so I thought I'll try it, and I liked it. But since I've started like the course in that like, college, I smoke a lot less. Them skins. Not all cows may smoke, and there's no pressure on those who decide not to. Them, like these baby mates and everything, you, you want to join in with them. <laughs> like feel the same way they do, but it's just <laughs> something that doesn't really tempt us. Cow spends on average 20 quid a week on cannabis, although he has periods when he doesn't smoke at all. I always feel like warm and like uh, everything's just in here, everything's in my head, you know, and like my mind's running wild, going in circles, you know, just like thinking about mad stuff that you wouldn't ever think about before. And then obviously you get the daft effects like giggles and that, you don't even know why you're laughing, but you just. You're in pain, you're laughing so much, and it's just a brilliant feeling. And it's like, I don't know, it just plays with your mind, and that's what I love about it. It just takes you out of the norm and puts you into a different reality. <laughs> <laughs> Cal says he's aware there are downsides to cannabis, but says he's had few bad experiences from smoking the drug. People who can't handle it shouldn't smoke. Um, <clears throat> You've got to be responsible enough to make the choice. I've, I've always said you need to be responsible in what you're doing, otherwise you'll end up hurting yourself or making your brain, like, as they say, again, schizophrenic or anything like that. I mean, I've never, ever witnessed it myself. Like, nobody I know has like, ever been like bad. I mean, everyone gets paranoid from time to time, but it doesn't hardly ever happen to me. The most popular type of cannabis at the moment is known as skunk. It looks, tastes and smells different from other cannabis types like hash and old school weed and according to the police can be four to five times stronger. Skunk is a strain of cannabis but it's also become a catch-all name for all strains made from the potent dried out flower of the female cannabis plant. Because skunk is stronger the high can be greater but so can the possible downsides like anxiety, paranoia and panic attacks. It's even been linked with psychotic illnesses such as schizophrenia. Whatever the highs and lows of skunk, a massive growing industry has exploded in the UK to supply demand. Police in the UK raid on average eight cannabis factories every day, and indoor growing operations have started springing up everywhere from inner city warehouses to suburban semis. Closing them down has become a major priority for the police. So right now I'm flying high above Bristol in a helicopter and we're going to use some of the equipment that the police use to try and track down cannabis factories. Let's have a look. So where are we headed today? Where are we going to go fly over? We're going to have a look around uh, the Clifton area of the city and take a look at a few properties over there show you what the camera can do. Cannabis factories create massive amounts of heat and this thermal imaging camera can identify hot buildings. It belongs to electricity firm Western Power who normally use it to spot faulty power lines but they regularly help the police in tracking down factories. So Alex with regards to the cannabis factories what are you looking for exactly when you're looking at that screen? Well, ideally, we're looking for any heat signature coming from a house that could be any vent from the uh, the roof, uh, something slightly different to uh, a, a set of houses that it could be part of, uh, and anything could be from any windows, anything from the top, really, as the heat rises, it should give us a fairly good heat signature. I'm going to take it around to the right initially. Okay. The crew take me to see some houses in South Bristol that are already on the police radar for suspected cannabis production. Yep. So you've got a sort of few heat sources there. Oh, uh, right, I can see the... And that is different, and that is definitely standing out from the other houses on that road. So that's definitely something they can go and have a look at. Do you want to look at one of the other ones? Yeah, we can do. The police use helicopters to patrol the skies several times a month to look for factories. Below, there are so many properties below, it does make you wonder how many people are growing cannabis below. In just 25 minutes, we've spotted at least three suspicious properties. Look at those two windows compared to those two windows. Around the guttering, a little bit of one on the top. That one there. Of course, it is. That's that, the other roof. Okay. 
the joys of technology. I had no idea that when I see helicopters in the sky, this is what they might be doing. With thermal images and intelligence on the ground, police drug squads can then request a warrant to break in and search a suspicious property. Yeah, there, it's on the corner of like houses up like that and houses up like that, and they join together. This drug squad has intelligence on a factory in a housing estate on the outskirts of Bristol. Front door, bang first. If we don't get a reply, we go up through the window because the window's open at the top of the house. So, and that's it. Right. Lately, cannabis factories have been cropping up in some of Britain's most ordinary-looking suburbs. How many gentle flowers grow in an English country garden? If they grow cannabis in a house in a nice street, um, they, they hope that it's, it's well hidden and it wouldn't stand out. If we do find cannabis and the residents come out, I'm sure you'll hear, oh, I can't believe that was happening in there. I, I didn't have any idea at all. And that's usually what we're faced with. People just generally don't realise what is going on. We might have to force the door open. Get in the bathroom. I'll come up after. Um, Normally we'd good. crash the doors, etc. earlier on if it was a Class A warrant, because obviously there's an opportunity for people to dispose of Class A drugs, but under these circumstances it's very difficult okay. if there is stuff in there to get rid of 20 or 30 cannabis plants with any, with any haste, yeah. so um, it was easier for us to get in the other way and hopefully prevent causing hundreds of pounds worth of damage. Yeah, I'd go up there, but Susie's, are, Susie's the smallest, see, so we send her in. <laughs> We've got that. two rooms. With cannabis plants confirmed in the house, easier access is required. I'm not sure that's how they do it on a telly. <sighs> There's about... 60 ish, we haven't counted them properly yet. Little saplings, all laid up in individual pots. They'll bring them on in this room, and then you've got the more mature plants, which now they're being brought on for the actual waiting to start budding. This is certainly not a professional outfit, that's uh, theirs is much more um, sophisticated than this. This is just a simple someone's having a go at it by the looks of it. But at the end of the day, someone's having a go at 80 plants, which potentially, you know, that's 40 or 50 thousand pounds potentially. So. You know, it's a profitable, profitable business, really. No one's living here. You know, people, this person has obviously just rented the house for the purpose of growing the cannabis. You know, and this is what we're coming across quite often. And you see the area it's in, you know, no one, no one would suspect that a, a nice house like this in the middle of a housing estate would be uh, used to grow cannabis. He's going to struggle with the amount of plants he's got to say it's for personal use. So, and like, the value of that is probably £50,000, so... You know, I, I mean, I believe that's, that's a commercial scale production of cannabis going on. See the rubbish bags, sheds full of them. There's probably up to 20 plants worth of cuttings in there. So I suspect we've got about 20 bags in there. So there's evidence of 10 previous crops. We found a, a council tax letter um, dated of July of this year. So we believe this is our person. When they talk about it, between the mates who've grown before, you know, oh yeah, you know, grow a few plants in your bedroom, please don't have a note. Um, you know, they, they think they think they're not gonna get caught. And then it's maybe the case with this guy, maybe he started off with with ten plants, you know, in the corner and then just expanded his business from there. When it comes to arresting cannabis gardeners, police find the softly softly approach usually works. How we tend to do it with cannabis is is arranged an arrest by appointment. That way it's convenient to us, um, it's convenient to them, and, uh, and it will all get dealt with quicker rather than chasing them all over Bristol, which can be a, a pain if we know, you know, if we speak to them nicely, then usually they come and hand themselves in. Please contact the Safe Bristol Drugs team in regards to your cannabis, and I'll put my sergeant's name on it so he knows who to ask for. Amateur growers like this one are becoming increasingly common. Not surprising when you look at the cash involved. With four crops a year, a cannabis grower can make up to 200 grand from a setup of this size. But if caught, they could expect a prison sentence plus the seizure of any assets earned from the crime. <laughs>